In this video, we'll take a look at the instruction set for the AVR microprocessors. Let's begin with the add instruction. And here is the add instruction. Here's an example of the assembly code version. And in this, we see that we're adding the contents of register 7 with register 4 and putting the result in register 7. This is encoded into 16 bits and is stored in the flash memory and we'll talk about how it's encoded into 16 bits uh, later on but let's just look at the assembly code version of it for now. This instruction also sets the carry bit so if there is carry out of this 8-bit addition then the carry bit in the status register will be set. Remember that every register is 8 bits, so this is an 8-bit add instruction, and it can be executed in a single cycle. Next, let's take a look at the add with carry instruction, ADC. And in this example, we see that register 8 and register 5 are being added together, and the result going into register 8. But in addition, the carry bit, either a 0 or a 1, is also added. So it uses the carry bit as well as setting the carry bit as a result of what carries out of the most significant bit of this. And this too can be done in a single cycle. Now we can combine these two instructions to perform 16-bit addition. Here's how that would look. Remember we added R4 plus R7 with our first add instruction generating uh, a carry and putting the result in R7. If we follow that instruction with an ADC instruction to add register 5 and register 8, then it takes the carry from the previous instruction and uh, uses that as the carry in. So this performs an 16-bit uh, addition and it takes two cycles. So this processor can use these two instructions to perform 16-bit addition in two cycles or 32-bit addition in four cycles. In the previous example the instruction just used data that was in registers. Here's an example add instruction that uses immediate data so add immediate and it's a 16-bit addition so it does word sized addition. In this case the immediate data is expressed uh, in, in, with a decimal number here, we have enough room in the instruction for six bits of data. So there's, uh, in other instructions we have eight bit uh, immediate values allowed, but in any case it's uh, extended to 16 bits and it's added to the quantity that's in the pair of registers, so the 16 bits that's in the register pair R8 and R7. And again notice the order of these, this is a little Indian ordering. So there are lots of different arithmetic and logic instructions in the AVR processor and uh, I'm not going to go into full detail on all the uh, variations and uh, how they are but uh, let me just uh, say that uh, the main categories of instructions are present. Um, addition, we saw the add, add with carry and we saw the add immediate word sized uh, there are also subtract instructions, um, an increment, add one instruction, a decrement, subtract one instruction. We have logical operations, logical and, logical or, with registers and immediate, exclusive or, a, a, a complement, logical complement, and uh, arithmetic negation. We also have a compare instruction, uh, several different variations. Uh, including immediate and uh, carry, uh, to uh, compare two um, values and set the condition code bits. We have a swap instruction to switch around the four bit halves of a byte. Uh, half of a byte is a nibble, so uh, the swap instruction swaps the nibbles in a byte. And there are also shift instructions, left and right, rotating and not. Each assembly language instruction is encoded by the assembler into a bit pattern and this bit pattern is called the machine instruction. And so here's an example of the add and the add with carry instructions uh, showing how they are encoded into machine uh, code. 
um, we have several bits that indicate which operation it is and one of these bits determines whether it's the add operation or the add with carry operation. We have 32 registers so we need five bits to specify which register so we have a uh, the five bit fields in some cases the uh, the fields are split apart into various pieces so this is the add and the add with carry instruction uh, next I want to mention the uh, rotate left through carry and the left shift logical instructions okay so these are shifting the bits in a register to the left by one bit and in one case it goes through the carry so the most significant bit is shifted into the carry bit in the status register and the carry is shifted back uh, into the least significant bit um, in another ver variation a zero is shifted in from the left okay so what's interesting is that these two instructions take just a single register okay they don't require um, the second register and so this same encoding is actually used with an add instruction you're not allowed to add one register to itself if the two registers are equal then it's assumed that this machine instruction is one of these left shift instructions so the rotate left through carry instruction it has the same machine code encoding as the add with carry except for the two register fields are identical and likewise the left shift logical instruction has the same machine code uh, as the add instruction with the two register fields equal. The AVR instruction set also has instructions for performing multiplication. It's an 8-bit machine and the basic multiply instructions are multiplying two 8-bit numbers and when you multiply two 8-bit numbers in general you get as much as a 16-bit result so the result is 16 bits this instruction takes not one cycle but two cycles to execute and there's some variations of the instruction there's several different instructions depending on whether you're multiplying signed and unsigned numbers and something else that's interesting is the result always goes into a particular pair of registers so you don't get to choose where the result goes it goes into the first two registers now if you want to multiply um, larger numbers uh, there are additional instructions that do uh, portions of that multiply operation okay uh, these are called the fractional multiply instructions and in addition to doing multiplication they also perform shifting and so on so uh, using these instructions you can multiply two 16-bit numbers to give a 32-bit result. Uh, this requires the execution of 16 instructions to do. So uh, to do uh, multiplication, you can do it, but as the numbers get larger, it takes more and more instructions. Uh, as for divide, if you'd like to do some division, well, there are no instructions that do division in this processor, so you'll just have to write a subroutine yourself to do it. Now let's look at the instructions for moving data from place to place. There are move instructions for moving an 8-bit quantity from one register to another. And there is another move instruction for moving a 16-bit quantity from one register pair to another register pair. And so these are examples of those instructions. If you want to move data from memory into a register, there is a load instruction. So for example, to get some data from a memory location, you uh, use this load instruction and it moves it into some register, any register you want. Um, the address of the memory location has to be in one of these 16-bit registers, the X, Y, and the Z registers. Uh, so you can use any of X, Y, or Z to refer to the address and memory you're interested in. So here over on the right is what these instructions examples do. There's also uh, uh, there are variations that do a post increment. So the idea here is you use X as a memory address, get something from memory, move it into whichever register you've chosen here, and then you increment X. So uh, this this allows you to step through memory uh, conveniently, combining an increment with the 
load uh, operation. And likewise, there's a pre-decrement. So if you want to go through memory in the other direction, uh, these are effectively push and pop types of instructions. Um, there is also uh, a variation where you can uh, load from uh, memory and provide a 16-bit address. Since each instruction is normally 16 bits in length, uh, this instruction uh, is actually one of the instructions that's a 32-bit instruction because we need the 16 bits for the address. Uh, load it from data space, uh, that's what they call the static RAM. Um, there are uh, also instructions that you, uh, allow you to load from uh, flash memory. So if data is stored in the flash memory, uh, you can load it with these uh, load instructions from program memory. Uh, in this case, you always have to use the Z uh, register um, for uh, containing the address. Uh, in addition to loading from data space, you can also store into data space. Uh, so there are similar store instructions that are uh, analogous to these load instructions. There are a number of instructions for transferring the flow of control. So there are conditional branch instructions as well as unconditional jump instructions. There are a number of different conditional branch instructions. Each one tests the status register in a different way and either branches or, or does not branch. So I'm not listing them all out, but there are lots of different uh, condition code tests, such as whether it's equal or less than or greater than or equal, uh, whether it's a negative number, overflow, and so on and so forth. There is a jump instruction uh, that can be provided uh, with an absolute address. And there's also a program counter relative jump, so this instruction all, only has a 12-bit offset. Um, there's an indirect jump, so using the Z register as the address, this instruction goes to the instruction that's pointed to by the Z register. So that would be useful, for example, for implementing switch statements and um, function pointers and, and, so, and so on. There is a skip instruction, which is a little bit like the conditional branch instructions. This is a whole class of instructions. So uh, what it does is it tests the status register and determines whether the condition code bits in the status register match the condition that it's being tested for. So for example, we might test for uh, the number being a negative number. And if it's true uh, or not, the, the skip instruction will um, execute the next instruction conditionally. So whether or not the next instruction after the skip instruction is executed uh, depends on whether the condition code bits in the status register match the condition that's being tested for. So this effectively allows you to optionally execute an instruction or not uh, without the overhead of a, a branch instruction. Uh, we also have push and pop instructions in the architecture. Um, this is an 8-bit, so we are pushing and, and or popping 8-bit uh, registers uh, to or from the stack. Remember the stack pointer is a register uh, that points uh, to static RAM, and so we have push and pop instructions. We also have call and return. Uh, the call instruction uh, will push the return address onto the stack and then jump. The target of the call instruction can be specified with an absolute address or with a program counter relative address. In addition to the normal kinds of instructions that uh, you're probably most familiar with, there are a number of unusual uh, instructions that I want to go over here. Uh, so the no-op instruction doesn't do anything, so there's a no-op instruction. There's a break instruction. Uh, this is not going to be used in application software. Uh, essentially it uh, uses an on-chip debugging system uh, and sets the CPU into a special stopped mode. There's a sleep instruction which will put the chip into a sleep mode where it's not executing instructions and waiting for interrupts. On the next uh, uh, video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the watchdog timer, but there's a watchdog reset instruction. Uh, and finally, there are some instructions for uh, storing into 
the flash program memory. Uh, we erase uh, pages in the flash memory. Uh, typically the erasure for flash memories uh, writes all ones to uh, the pages and then uh, to actually write data into the uh, flash memory you have to write uh, zero bits in so uh, there's sort of two steps um, one erase uh, will erase a large amount of the flash memory and then you can write in smaller pieces of the flash memory uh, by changing some bits uh, from one to zero uh, you can also set some lock bits uh, for the bootloader section to protect it.